Uh, hello, so I'm now in uh, part two of this discussion about working with JSON data. And in the previous video, I looked at this, this thing that's wonderful in the world, a sunflower, beautiful flower, and how you might encapsulate the idea of a sunflower as data in a JSON file. And it was kind of a reasonable demonstration for this first step of working with data. But if you look at it, it's, 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 uh, it's really simple. It's like a single object. It's got four properties in it. There's not a lot of complexity, you know, flower.name, flower.r, that's all you sort of had to worry about. But realistically, you're going to find a data set that's going to have a lot more in it. You might want to have a data set that has, you know, the high temperature in, you know, Tokyo every day for the last uh, year uh, uh, and then lots of other information about the weather that day and there's going to be a list and a whole bunch of like nested objects. So what's a scenario like that and how do you deal with it? So um, the scenario that I'm going to use I think and I'll, I'll pull it from um, this uh, website that I mentioned that has a whole lot of uh, data sources in it that you can grab. Um, let's think about birds for a second. Another personal favorite topic of mine except that I'm not going to be able to like pull names of birds out of a hat. But so first things first. If you go back to this, there's just a single thing in there. I really should just keep going with the flowers thing, but the example I have is birds. So what if your data isn't a, like a single object, but actually is a whole bunch of objects? Like here are 10 images from Google Image Search, or here are 10 recent articles from the New York Times. What if your data is 10 birds that live in Antarctica? Is that what I have? I can't remember That's the, that's the data that I have. So uh, the data set, Again, a JavaScript object generally always starts with a curly bracket and a closed curly bracket to indicate it's an object, but the data itself might have an array in it. And that array uh, might be named birds. And each one of those birds might be an object <laughs> with a name you know, penguin and a height, <laughs> oh, I can't think of anything, uh, something, I <laughs> size, height, let's just go with height. I don't know, how tall are penguins? They're small, one meter, uh, right? And then that's an object. And then the next thing in the array is the name is an eagle, and these should be in quotes. And the height of an eagle <laughs> is uh, three meters. Obviously, I don't know anything about birds. Clearly, we're finding out. So you can see how this now has a bit more complexity than just the sunflower. Um, because what we have here is an object that has a property in it called birds. That property is an array. Each element of the array is an object. So let's say, for example, we loaded this into a variable called data, how would you get access to the height of, of the eagle, for example? Data dot birds would get me here. Now this is an array. This is element zero. This is element one. So if it's an array, I've got to say index one. And so now I'm in this object and I want to get the height dot height. So you can see I have to figure out the path into this JSON file. I need to know the property name that I'm looking for. And if that property is an array, I need to know the index that I'm looking for. And if that thing in the array is an object, I need to know the property of that object that I'm looking for. So this is just one scenario. I could just, I could probably like let this camera record for like the next like 72 hours and just keep making scenarios. Like I would like, we would all become like insane in our like world of like JSON scenarios. But so this is the kind of thing you really need to unfortunately or fortunately practice on your own as you start to find different data sources. But let's do this one step further and I'm gonna go pull an actual data set about birds and then we'll double back and do this again with that data set and there's also another missing piece here what if you wanted to actually loop through and do something there are a hundred birds in this file how would I make this index into the array some sort of variable like I so I could say what's the first bird and then the second bird and then the third bird so that's another aspect of this that's important okay so uh, let's go the the um, 
The place where I'm going to find a data set, it's a, a GitHub repository, and I'm, I'm gonna skip talking about what GitHub or Git is, but you can find the URL. I'll, I'll, I'll definitely post it somewhere and see if you wanna pause the video and look at it, it's right up here. Um, just slash Kapora is all you need. Whoops, I'm already there. So I wanna go here, and I'm gonna click under data, and I'm gonna look for uh, animals, and I'm really like, I mean, which one was I doing, birds of North America? Oh no, let's do the Antarctica. Birds of Antarctica. So you can see here is the JSON file. Now let's make this, actually, so let me, um, sorry, let me do something to just copy it into uh, uh, P5. So I'm gonna make a new JSON file called birds.json. I'm gonna paste it in here. I'm gonna hit save. I'm gonna make this a little bigger and I'm going to come look at it here. So here we have this scenario now and we have to do some detective work. So let's come back over here. I'm gonna to have to go back and forth a little bit. This is no longer our JSON file. Our JSON file is actually, you can look at it for a second while I race, it's that thing. Take a look at it. Does it make sense to you? What's the first property? Is the first property an array? No, it's not an array. Is it an array? I have to come over here and look. The first property is description. Description is just some text. The next property is source, which is also some text. The next property is birds, which is an array. Each element of the array is an object that has two properties. One is family, oh, one is members, and members is also an array. So you can see how net nested this can become. So let's say what I want to do is, and this is like, you wouldn't, you wouldn't normally, uh, I think this is sort of arbitrary, you wouldn't necessarily want to do this, but just to like make the sort of case here is I'm really interested in, I want to pull out exactly the imperial shag. So how do I get to, uh, actually, let's, let, let, me, let me not use that as an example. I, um, <laughs> let's look at uh, the, cro I don't know how to pronounce this, the crozet shag. I kind of want to do a Google image search to see what that bird looks like. Oh, cormorants, I love cormorants. They're, they're good, they like fly so low over the water. They're excellent. Um, so, uh, so how do I get to this particular piece of data? Okay, so let's say I have an object called data. What's the first thing that this is embedded in members, which is in this object, which is in this other array called birds. So what I need to do is say <laughs> data dot birds. That's the first thing I need to do. Come back over here. Now I'm in here. I'm at birds. This, is, this whole object is object zero. This second object is object one. So I want to be in object one. Now, what's the property I want in object one? Uh, not family, I want members. So object one dot members. Object one dot members. And now, over here, uh, zero, one, two. So that's also an array, and I want to look at the crozet, or the croset, or the croset shag, which is the third element, but index two in that array. So now, over here, index two. So again, searching through, looking into a JSON file to pull out some aspect of the data is all about knowing the path. What's the root element? You can think of the root element. What's the object inside of that that you're looking at? Is that object an array? If it is, what, uh, then what's the element in that array? If that's an object, then you wanna get the property of that object, which happens to be array. So again, every scenario is gonna be different, but this is one scenario that's a bit more complex than just that single sunflower example. So now let's actually like display this in our code to make sure, and I'm gonna close the flower one, and I'm gonna say uh, birds, uh, I'm gonna load that JSON file into here, and I'm just gonna say create p, Let's, uh, let's actually not even use a canvas. Create P. Uh, if you haven't watched the, the, el the videos about how to make uh, DOM elements, how to make paragraphs and links and other things on the page, you can look at that. I'm going to say uh, var bird equals birds. Oh, no, data. Oh, sorry, I want to make this call this data because the first thing, data. <laughs> Are you looking at that? Data dot birds. What did I say? index one dot members index two index one dot members index two and now create p that bird and if we run this we're going to see look at that there it is that's the bird i'm seeing on the screen now again this is like a trivial sort of like this is like i'm proving that json works there's data in there, it has a structure, that structure can be accessed, but most likely what you'd wanna be doing is displaying everything in the data set, or 
out creating some tool where the user could search into the data set. And you know, ideally, that data set might have like thousands of birds in it instead of just you know, 10 or however many are in there. So let's, let's go a little bit deeper. I'm at 10 minutes and you're sticking with me. I'm thankful again because I, I feel like I'm, talk, I'm talking. It's weird to do these things by myself in this room, even though at least I have a window and I can see there's people on the street. Hello out there. <laughs> Say hi, I'm making a video about JSON. Do you care? There's, I wonder if there's somebody watching on their phone. Maybe that would be sort of strange. Okay, back to this um, thing. Um, so what if I, I wanted to do, let's look at the data again. Uh, I haven't done any singing yet, which I think I probably should do to just make this video a little more interesting. What if what I wanted to do was display, uh, uh, I have an idea. I think I did this as an example. I, what I want to do is display the family of, I want to display all the birds in this file. And I want to see the family as like a header and then I want to see the list of the birds underneath it. So like bigger text for the family and smaller text for these. So let's just start with that. So the difference here is instead of looking for a particular item, what I want to do, and it might make sense for me to say var birds equals data.birds. So I'm just going to pull out that birds object in the file, which is data.birds, and stick it in a variable because that's an array. And now I can say loop through birds.length. And let's just start by saying create element. And h1, I can't spell, element h1, what? Birds index i.family. So I want birds index 0.family, then index 1.family. And then, you know, presumably there's more birds down here. So birds index i dot family. So this now, you can see, uh, oh, whoops, and I don't need this anymore. Oh, wait, where did I, oh, yeah, sorry. I, this is irrelevant. This was from my previous example. You can see here, this is a way of now looping through the data. So you can see that this particular loop is going through and accessing every element of the array, birds, and looking for the family. So these are just the family names. But what I want to do is actually look through all the members of the family names. So inside that loop, each and every bird, I need another loop to say each and every member of each and every bird. So how do I do that? So first, let me make a variable called members, which is birds.members, right? Members, birds.members. That's that array, and then this array. <laughs> And so now what I want to do is say for, and I'll use j, because I need a different variable than i, members.length, j, j++. And I'll just say create div members index j. Because so first I want to get the fam, I have all these bird objects, and I want to just see the family name. And then I want to look at the members. But the members is an array, so I need to loop through that array. And let's see if that works. Uh, cannot find, OK, so what did I get wrong? I must have got ah, birds.members, var members. Let's look at this again. Birds, ah, aha. It's not birds.members, it's what? Birds index i.members, classic mistake, right? I'm looping through an array called birds, and I want to get the members of each element of the array. So I want to get the members of element 0, then the members of element 1. That's what I did with family. <clears throat> so I need to have index i.members. And now we can see here, look, there are the albatrosses. There they are, the cormorants, the diving pretzels, the duck, geese, and swans, the gulls, the penguins. Ooh, lots of good penguins. This is a great data set. You can see now I have all of this data appearing on the page. Now, again, I haven't done anything that I would say is interesting with this data, but I'm showing you just how to navigate a JSON file. You might look for a particular piece of data. You might iterate over all the data. Certainly, you could think about how would you draw something based on the data? Like maybe you would draw circles tied to the number of members of each family of birds. Uh, you could animate that. Could you have flying birds on the screen, each with their name? <laughs> I don't know. Think of all sorts of creative things you could do besides just, I'm just showing you, let me literally display exactly the data on the web page. So this, I think, kind of, you know, I, I could keep going with this in the end. Like <laughs> you're going to have a different 
data set is going to look different than you're going to have your own sets of like how to navigate it. Hopefully this will give you a sense. Practice this. So get a JSON file, make it yourself, find it from somewhere online, load it, like put it in your P5 sketch, load it into a variable, see if you can pull out a single piece of data, see if you can pull out all the data, can you get that to work? I encourage you to use this Corpora uh, repository which just has a lot of kind of goofy and random sets of data in it. Uh, and uh, hopefully that'll get you started. What I want to do in the next video is look at how you might pull this data from a URL. So what if you had a www.something.com slash something.json that you could pull rather than just this local file that's typed in your project. The reason why that could be useful is somebody else might prepare a JSON file for you that's dynamic, that's changing, and you could query it, which is like one step closer to this idea of an API, um, of, of using a, 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 somebody else's sort of system that you're querying to get a, a certain amount of JSON data back. Um, so I don't know, I feel like God, you must have all these, a lot of that must not have made any sense or you probably turned this off long ago. Um, but if you're still watching, um, I don't know, say something to me that, that you're watching. Uh, never mind, don't say it. Don't, you, you, uh, I'm going to edit this that part out. I don't know what I'm, I seem very, very needy today. Uh, maybe I am. Uh, <clears throat> okay, um, I think, I think this. Uh,